Abitawe uh, just a couple of months ago and we're delighted to have him here now to share his thoughts uh, because this, uh, vitally for us in Wales, gives us the Scottish perspective. Roch Croeso Mawr, he, Mr Robin McAlpine! Oh, hello everybody. It is so nice to be down here. Absolutely delightful. Every time I come to Wales, and I've been to Wales and indie business about um, three or four times in the last few years, every time I come, I leave with a spring in my step. I really do. A real sense of joy, a real sense of excitement. And I was trying to think what it is. Now, of course, it's all of you beautiful Welsh people, and in particular, it's hearing you all speak your beautiful language. The first time I was here, the first time I was here, I was in a train, just heading home, and I had a brilliant time, and I was feeling really good. And a group of school kids came in and sat with me in the train and chatted away themselves in Welsh, and I thought it was the best thing I'd ever heard, and I always enjoy it. But, oh, the more you clap, the less beer we get. Right, so... That's not really the reason, though. The reason is that sometimes when we're fighting these fights, it can feel like you're fighting it on your own. And these fights take time, and they're hard, and things go well, and then they don't, and then they do, and then they don't. And throughout it, you can feel a little bit on your own, but we're not on our own. Every time I come down here, I remember that we are working with you for the same thing, shoulder to shoulder. Your country with your future in your hands, my country with my future in my hands. The Flemish with their country in their hands and all the rest of the autonomy movements in Europe. And why? Right, okay, I'm going to do a tiny little bit of economics, don't leave. So I just want you to remember one number. This number is a very simple number. Every capital city in Europe takes more than its share of the national wealth. That's what capital cities do. And on average, if you average the whole of Europe, the capital cities of all the economies in Europe take about twice as much wealth as their per capita share out of the nation's GDP. Right, except London. And you should see the graph. Graph it sometime, it's great, because the graph goes like this. And then you've got London, which takes five times its share of the nation's wealth. Five times. If you do the graph, you need to change the entire perspective of it because the difference between London and every other capital city in Europe is so big. And that's bad enough. But what's really galling is that they take all the money and then they make us feel like we're substandard for giving us a little bit of it back. We exist in an economy which was rigged against us as our nations. And it's not just us. I love Wales, but I love the north of England too. And they're getting screwed by London. And one of the reasons why I believe this is the best thing, not just for us, but the best thing for all of Britain, is because England needs a chance to discover what the hell it is. It isn't just the city of London, it isn't just bankers, and it isn't just that awful mess Westminster. It's a better country too. But if we are all stuck like this, stuck together in, an, in a country that still thinks it's a big deal, even as it's declining, we'll never find those different ways forward. <laughs> So I started the Commonweal Think Tank, which is a left of centre think tank, and we've done quite a lot of work on the economy of an independent Scotland. But one of the things that keeps coming back to me is when I look at what Scotland's got, Scotland has got enormous resources, and these are resources which are very well suited to the modern world. If you've got space and you've got land, you have the capacity to grow, for example, bio crops. And bio crops are at the heart of an industrial revolution that is a green industrial revolution. Bioplastics, construction materials. And the more of your land that you are not using well, the more economic potential you as a nation have for energy, for resources, for food, for the things that will matter in the 21st century. So Wales is a rich country, a powerful, rich country to my eyes. And of all the things that I've done about the ability for Scotland to be independent, every time I do it, I think, I must pass that down to Wales, because they've sort of got the same opportunities. And they too need to understand, and sometimes I don't think Wales does, needs to understand how strong you are and what a good position you are in to be that nation. So, so, 
I won't hold you up too much because you've been here for ages. It's an absolutely gorgeous day. I absolutely love being invited down. I think this is the third time I've been at Swansea in the last couple of years. And can I, and can I just say that um, from my other two visits, it never occurred to me to blink, bring sunblock. So, so um, I didn't even know you could get sun in Swansea from the last couple of times I was here. And I'm speaking as someone from uh, Glasgow originally. Um, so thank you so much for inviting me down. It is always a pleasure. Um, I want to leave a couple of things. First of all, a big thank you for something else. In 2014, when we were about to have the referendum, with a couple of weeks to go, someone sent me a video. And it was from you guys. It was a video from Wales, with person after person after person having done a little selfie video. And all those selfie videos said the same thing, go for it Scotland. And I watched that video with two weeks to go. And I'm going to be honest, I watched it with somebody else and I had to pretend I wasn't crying. It meant so much to me. It really did. The solidarity of Wales and everything that we have done.